Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mel, I'm an Uruguayan neuroscientist and on the side of my PhD I have this YouTube channel in which I interview scientists from all over the world. Today's guest has a different topic to share with us than the other people I have brought before her. Her name is Manuela Marescotti, she's from Italy and currently she is working and she's living in Scotland. She has a PhD in science, so she, she is a scientist. Partly works in science, but on the other part she's working in scientific communication and more specifically she is an editor on a scientific journal. So I think it's very interesting to bring someone from that world to tell us something about how this looks like. So hi Manuela, thank you so much for being here with us today, I really appreciate it. Hi Mel, thank you very much uh, to uh, inviting me to have uh, this chat with you. I'm very happy to be here today. So to start, tell us a bit about your story, what did you study? My name is Manuela Marescotti and I'm here originally from Naples uh, in Italy. I have studied medical biotechnology at the undergraduate at the University of Naples Federico II. And there I have also done my master in medical biotechnology. Later, I moved to Edinburgh, Scotland to do my PhD in neuroscience. Besides my research-based career, I focused in the last years on the uh, science communication aspect within academia. And in fact, after being the editor of the newsletter for the Genetic Society UK for four years, I joined two years ago the Brain Communications Journal as a scientific editor. You have to know that it is uh, very important uh, for scientists to publish their work as articles in the peer-reviewed journals. Brain Communications is one of them. What are these peer-reviewed journals? These are uh, journals um, and uh, maybe the most famous that you maybe have heard about are Nature, science where the articles that contain the results of a study undergo a very precise and specific quality check. This quality check is done by other scientists that work in the same field. So they are experts of that specific subject. So they check the kind of data that are presented in all their aspects. As a scientific editor uh, for this journal, I, uh, I check that uh, the quality of the data uh, follow the rules uh, established uh, by this journal. So I check the statistics follow uh, our rules uh, as well as other aspects uh, in which the way in which these data are presented. And tell us, how is it like to be a scientific journal editor? I don't have a really uh, typical day at the moment because I still combine job as a scientific editor with a job as a scientist as I am a postdoc. I need to have uh, some uh, a kind of routine uh, because it helps me to focus on all the different tasks. First of all, uh, I try, I find very useful uh, since I have many different uh, tasks to deal with for the journal to focus on priorities of the day. First thing in the morning when I sit in front of my computer, go through the manuscripts that I have to check. So usually the manuscripts after they have been um, checked by the reviewers and a decision has been suggested by the associate editors, they go in my hands and I check if uh, all the data conform with the uh, quality required by our journal guideline. I send my recommendations to the editor-in-chief that approves finally the decision uh, from the associate editors and my recommendations. After that, I deal with all the other uh, queries that I get by email. Queries go to the editorial office manager, therefore I get through her all the questions from the authors and try to help sometimes the authors to, uh, to find, for example, a good way to organize their data in a graphical abstract. Uh, I try to understand uh, you know, their explanation for a, a particular way they show with their, their data. Lastly, I also focus on a very important 
different aspects, making uh, posts for the, ju- for the papers on our journal Twitter account. It is very important for me that is to capitalize the work done by scientists. So I think it is very important also to use uh, the social media to spread the voice about a new work that has been published. So uh, this is more or less my routine, of course, with some variations according to the day. It's a very dynamic kind of job um, that uh, that is different from the uh, research related one, but um, uses a lot of my background. Cool. And can you give us a couple of examples of writing tips or common mistakes that people do since we have you, an expert on this? I realized that there are so many things that um, PhD and postdocs as a potential authors um, don't know about the uh, publishing process. In particular, I realized that uh, um, after so much work they have done, also so much commitment they have put to prepare images, plots, data, they don't amplify the news about the don't capitalize really um, what they have done and so I gave um, in a post tips about fast ways considering that scientists are always super busy to spread the voice about their their recent publication. Also another aspect is uh, um, advice about making figures. If they are solid, if they are visually present in an organized and clear way for the reader uh, through uh, Instagram posts or short videos. This, uh, uh, I am working also on supporting these contacts with longer videos on my YouTube uh, channel science.manuela. So if you are interested in this topic, please uh, give a look to these two profiles. I think it's very important to mention because maybe for those that are in science for a long time, they, of course, they, they have published papers or they read papers all the time and they know that there are scientific journals and there are editors and there's people that work in, in that side, but sometimes for the early people in the career, they don't know about this as an option. They don't consider it, they don't think about it. So I think it's very cool to use this video as this opportunity. And secondly, I think it's very important what you do in general because um, there's a lot of research being done and sometimes it's not a matter of producing research that is something that is being done all over the world, but filtering this research and really being careful with not spreading misinformation, not spreading research that has mistakes, being very careful in the type of methods, statistics and so on that you are using to really know that the result that you are seeing is really what you, are, what you think you are seeing. So I think that this work is really, really important. And those were all the questions actually that I have for you for today. So thank you so much, Manuela, for giving your time. Thank you again, uh, all of you, for uh, listening to my experience. And thank you for Mel for inviting me today to share uh, um, my experience. Have a good day. Bye. And thank you for your attention. If you like the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I also have a Patreon account and with every Patreon contribution I have, I can collaborate with freelancers in Latin America to keep producing these videos and see you in the next video.